What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access Entertainment. As always, please hit that subscribe button. It's right down there and it's free. As y'all know, that helps us keep coming to you guys as often as possible with as many interviews as possible. So please hit that subscribe button, like our content, share it, talk about it, be about it, each one, teach one. And we appreciate your guys' support in getting us this far. And of course, you can hit us on Cash App to support us that way. Unique Access ENT. Now, today we have the honor and the privilege of being joined by Howie T, the hitman Howie T. Thank you for coming through. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> That's how we roll. Yes, yes. It's an honor and privilege, privilege to have you here, man. Um, uh, for the invite. Yeah, yeah. So one thing I never knew, but as I was studying and learning, trying mm -hmm. to understand and trying to connect some of these dots, did, right, you, right. did you produce on the Crash Crew, the 2468? Or is that yeah. you? That was yeah. you? Yeah. Okay. So that yeah. was the first time, but that was just uh, Howie T and it wasn't with the two E's and it was all different. It wasn't Hitman. No, it, it, it was always with the two E's. They just didn't write it right. <laughs> well, that's and, why. You know, and, I was hit, and I was Hitman before that. So... As, as we get into this, I'm glad that I solved that mystery that I'd had since I was a little kid. But how did you get down with the Crash Crew and end up uh, working on that song? Um, believe it or not, I was going to the store. I left my house. I was going to the store, and I ran into uh, I ran into Daryl C. He was um. Um, he had he had some um, he had some twelve inch of high powered rap, and he was just walking around neighborhoods giving out the records. So I ran into him. I didn't even know he was Daryl C from Crash Group. He was just some guy handing out records. So he gave me one, and we just got to talking and bye bye bye, and then we just you know we just formed a you know, uh, on my friendship since then. But I used to go to the Bronx and hang out with him. He used to take me to like to some, you know, to, you know, some record stores to find break beats and stuff like that. Wow. Yeah. Then we, our friendship just grew. And then they wanted to make a record and he wanted me, you know, to do a, a jam. I, I think you, you may have to do a research but I think I'm the only outside of Sugar Hill production to ever go in Sugar Hill Record Studio. <laughs> well, that's also why I was confused because I knew they were very... Right, they had a, a camp, like a clip. Yeah, yeah. I was the only outsider to come into Sugar Hill Studio and produce a record outside of, of Sugar Hill's production, you know, team. Mm -hmm. So when you met uh, Daryl C, was this like 84-ish, 85, would you say? Um, I met, yeah, I think it was like 84. Okay. Whenever the high-powered rat came out on the black, the black um, label with the yellow already. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. So at that point, what was going on in your world as far as musically and personally, what was going on with you? I would just um I was still I was still like a neighborhood DJ, playing at block parties, house parties, and stuff like that. So I was just going to record stores, buying you know updated records, you know, because as a DJ you gotta stay up to date, you know. So I was just basically like just DJing, hmm. and, and then it was in it was in '83. I think it was like summer of 83. I went to Rock and Soul on what street? What was that? 7th Avenue? Across the street from Madison Square Garden and Mayfields. Okay. I don't know if you know that, that store, Rock and Soul. I, I've, I've seen it. I know what it is. Yeah. So that was one of my go to record shops. Okay. And I was, I was there, you know, you know, to see what they had new. And then, um, and when I left the record store, this guy named Peter Allen stopped me with a little tape recorder. And um, he wasn't a he wasn't a rapper, 
or producer, he was like managing this rap group. It was a guy and a girl. And they were and they were working on a song called, I think it's called Fresh Beat. So he was a stopping people playing the tape, to, you know, to get their opinion to see if he was going in the in the right direction. So when he played, he stopped me and played for me. I was like, nah, man, that's whack. Ain't nobody want to hear that. <laughs> so he asked me if I could come to the studio and help them. You know, you know, like work on the song. I don't know why he asked me to come to the studio. It wasn't like <laughs> I was a producer and nothing like that. I was just still a DJ. So I said, all right, I'll come down there. So um, it wasn't, it was like I met him like on a Wednesday or Thursday. And he told me to come down there that Saturday. So I told my homeboy, Carlos, because um, and then my crew was um, Howie T and the Short Shot 4, Short Shot 4 MC. And we had a manager, this guy named Carlos. So I told him about it. So he came down there with me. So we was trying to work on the song. We went in the mic booth. Fresh beat, then, you know, tried to do whatever. And he just wasn't coming out right. So he asked me if we had anything. You know what I'm saying? That we wanted to record, that we wanted. And we said, yeah, we didn't. When we said, yeah, yeah, heck yeah. So he told me to bring the music, you know, and, and, and let him check it out, bye, bye, bye. So that was supposed to be like three days later. So within that trip, in that three days, I made something up musically. And then one of our MCs from the Short Shop Four, he was in jail, unfortunately. But he always had this banging rap that when we on block parties and blah, blah, he had this rap that was so hot. On call of said, yo, let's use this rap. You know, bah, bah, bah. I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't care. I mean, you, know, you know what I'm saying? My, my part was the music. <laughs> so I ain't care, you know, as far as what the lyrics is gonna be. So we went down there and played the music Carlos said the rap, and they were like, yo, this, yo, we got to record this, bye, bye, bye. So it was, don't be at the bottom or in the middle. That ain't nothing but a funny, funny rhythm. Maybe it's actually, but we broke it up because the rhyme would have finished too quick. So it was like, don't be at the bottom or in the middle. Bum, 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 bum. Life ain't nothing but a funny. So we kind of stretched it out, and we just kept recording and we recorded it, and it came out. Um, I don't know if you know the song Get Tough. Yeah. And the group was C3. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I came up with that whole track in three days. Wow. <laughs> and then we did that rap, and then Carlos had an, another friend. His name was Dash. He, you know, Carlos said, bro, him man. Because they were, them two supposed to be the... You know the rappers, and I'm, you know, supposed to be the DJ. So, um, the guy Peter Allen was like, "Yo, man, you need to rap too. Won't you rap?" And I was like, "Nah, man, I'm not a rapper. I'm the DJ." And they talked me into it, so I ended up rapping on that. Right. <laughs> so I did the music, I did the scratching, and I did rap on that one song. So what? Uh... Even before that, in your life as a person, what made you gravitate more to DJing and and being a musician side of things or doing the music stuff than more the rap? Um, I was always into music because I, um, I tell you a story my mother told me because I was born in Birmingham, England, all right, and my parents are Jamaican, so they always had like house parties. So anytime they had a house party, you know, my brother, my two sisters and I, my mother would put us to bed upstairs. And then every once in a while, as the party's going on, she'd come and check on us. So she said she came upstairs to check on us and I wasn't in the bed. So she was looking for me. And she found me behind the speaker box, sleep. 
I was sleep behind the speaker box. You know, so, and then as years went on, and time I go to like my aunt's house or my uncle's house, I always go through their records and the songs and the records that I like, I make a pile and put it aside. So the next time I go to their house, I'll pull out my pile and those are the records I play. So I was always into music like that. And that's how I end up DJing. Cause I was always, you know, I was always into music and my brother bought my first two turntable and a mixer, but he didn't, he didn't buy me headphones. So my first outside the house party was in my backyard. I had the turntables, mixer, no headphones. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was mixing without headphones. My first, my first mix was Rolling Stones Miss You. Really? Okay. Yeah. So I had those two records and I was mixing. I would make it bleed a little so I could hear the tempo and mix it and get another record, make it bleed a little so I could hear the tempo. So music, I was the I, I was in DJing, you know, in that aspect because I've seen other DJs. I was just doing it. And I knew you're supposed to have two turntables because I've heard I've heard of like Flash and Theodore using two turntables, but I've never visually seen it. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just like my scratching. I started to scratch because I've heard flashing them tapes. I've never seen what they did to get the scratch sound. I just figured it out. <laughs> I was always one of those guys. I always try to figure something out. So anytime my boys used to have flash tapes and Grand Mister um, and Grand Wizard Theater tapes and the Cold Crush and all that, they always give me a copy. And I've been listening to it. I've never went to none of those shows they had like at the park in, um, in the Bronx. You know, I never went to none of that. So when I hear them scratching, I figure out what they did to get that effect. So that's how I end up scratching. I figured it out. I heard it. I was like, wait, let me see. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, much different, but for me, I didn't end up being a DJ, but I remember when I would first, when I was a little kid and I first heard scratching, I had no idea what it was. I just knew I liked the sound. Right. And, yep. And that, that leads into uh, the next things I wanted to talk to you about, because I first uh, started really seeing your name when you were doing the whistle stuff and then some stuff with UTFO. So how did you get with Whistle and Kango Kid to do their, that stuff. Okay, now, a Get Tough was out. It was playing on the radio like crazy. The reason why it was playing on the radio like crazy is because we got Mr. Magic and Molly Mars to do the remix. So if they do the remix, they got to play it on BLS. So, you know, our record was always on the air on BLS, blah, blah, blah. Latin Rascals were doing their edit with the tape and all that stuff. So Kango, I knew Kango before, you know, I did get tough because he lived, lived in the neighborhood. And there, um, you know, back then, if there's like, like more than one crew, there's always like a battle and stuff like that. So one time they wanted to battle. <laughs> UTF all wanted to battle. How would you in the short shot for? So I said, okay, we'll battle. But whoever wins gets the other person's equipment. Let's battle for equipment. And they backed out. They didn't want to battle because they were scared. We had a lot. I mean, I don't know why he got scared because, I, first of all, I had more equipment than him. All they had was a receiver, two turntables, and some house speakers. I had two 15-inch bass bottoms, some 12-inch mids, 
a box full of hi hats and horns. We had a console with a two turntables, a mixer, preamp, EQ, <laughs> tape deck. They could have got all of that, but they, you know. So, so now, so now CD three came out. It was playing. So, I, I guess full force it took, you know, UTFO to the studio, you know, because they, you know, they wanted to cut the record. So after they cut the record, Kango came to my basement to play it for me, you know, get my opinion. It was um. It was um hanging out. Okay. Hanging out. Hanging out was the A side. Roxanne, Roxanne was the B side. Right. Right. So he came to my basement, he played it for me. I was like, oh, okay. That's cool. That sounds good, man. He said, yeah, but now we need to come up with the B side. And he said his idea was when he raps a beat, when Dr. Ice rap, another beat. And when educated rapper raps, another beat. So I'm like, all right. So I had my 808. He programmed his beat. I programmed Dr. Ice beat. And then I said, yo, with educated rapper, when educated rapper raps, the loop big beat. Because on the block parties, when Mixmaster Ice throw big beat, educated rapper get on the mic. His flow, his vocal tone rides that beat. He sounds good on Big Beat. So I said, Luke Big Beat when educated rapper parties. And he was like, all right, cool, cool, cool. Bye, bye, bye. So I put the little tape together. I was working on C3 second song. So I couldn't go to the studio. So I gave him my 808. I had a little sample called Instant Replay. So I gave them that sample so they could sample, yeah, you know, beat beat or loop it. So I gave them that, bye, bye, bye. And then once they finished, came back, they played for me. I was like, yo, that's hot. So how I ended up in the full force family was when um, all these Roxanne and some records, Shante came out with Roxanne and Shante. So Full Force wanted to put out the grit, you know, you know, their rock star. The real rock star. Right, the real rock star. So right. it was a girl first before Joanne, you know, the Puerto Rican rock star. And there was another rock star first. She's the one that actually made the rock star, um, the real rock star, you know, record. Her and Full Force had some kind of order now. So that's how... Joanne got into the mix. So now, when they were putting on a little tour together, the Full Force family, so Roxanne didn't have a DJ. So Kango asked me if I could be Roxanne's DJ. So I was like, all right. So I saw that had the, yo, good looking out for the Roxanne, Roxanne. You know, you, you know, helping me out with the Roxanne, Roxanne. I saw that hit. Had him saying, yo, good looking out. I'll let you be Rock Tans DJ. So when we go out to tour, it's like, you know, you could make, you know what I'm saying, some money, you know what I'm saying, touring and stuff. So, you know, that's what happened. I became her DJ, bye, bye, bye. So now, this is how we got to whistle. I'm always in my basement doing beats, always. And anytime somebody come down there and hear something, they end up writing to it and making a record. Just like Full Force Alice, I want you just for me. I was I was messing around with the beat. Paul Anthony came to my basement, heard it, sat on the step, I wrote Alice, I want you just for me. So I had a beat going. Kango came to my basement. He was like, yo. This beat is nice, man. Bye, bye, bye. And he sat there and he came up with the hook. Ain't nothing serious. Um, I forgot how it go. <laughs> the Just Bugging chorus? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. the, chorus, the, the hook. He came up with the hook. So he went and got his crew together. You know, um, 
you know, he's the one that pulled Whistle together. He went and got some of his homeboys and formed the Whistle, you know, and that's how, you know, Whistle came about, blah, blah, blah. Now, the reason why we did that is because, once again, I was had a beat going in my basement. Kango came, heard it, like, yo, this beat is nice. Sat there and wrote the hook to how we steal all. Right? How we see you know, Kango came up with that, wrote it. So now the reason why we came up with Whistle is because Kango was mad at Full Force. Why was Kango mad at Full Force? When Full Force has a group, if Paul Anthony wrote um, and writes a song, it's written by Full Force. If B5 writes a song, it's written by full force. Bowlegged writes a song. Bowlegged Lou writes a song. It's written by full force. So when we did the How Is T.O., when the record was recorded, done, we had the vinyl in our hand and Kango Star written by full force because B5 wrote the lyrics, you know, the rap for Roxanne. So it was written by full force. Howie T and UTFO. It didn't say Kango. Wow. So they automatically pushed that theory of, <laughs> you know, because when one person writes in full force, it's full force wrote. So he thought, full force thought, that if anybody from on UTFO writes something, it's written by UTFO. Kango didn't like that. <laughs> so he was like, man. So he came when he when he heard that whistle beat, then he came up with that. He put his own group together so it could say, written by Howard T and Kango Kid. <laughs> right. So that's how that's why whistle came about because Kango was mad at full four. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. It's also it's also crazy that just with the your own group with Crash Crew, with Whistle, with all this has happened so quickly and you've seen so much of the <laughs> non-music side of the music business. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> that's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. So that's how Whistle came about. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The history of gangster rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a fifty thousand dollar car. My whole angle always was, I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. There will be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that, five on your TV basketball? Yo MTV it just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. It's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always going to be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.